Okay, it is Wednesday, March 17th, 2021. Happy St. Patrick's Day. And this demo today is for international foods. We're going to be making some Chinese crispy spring rolls. So I've got my fryer already set up. It's at um, 375 degrees preheated with some vegetable oil on it. So that's ready to go as soon as that, you know, we're all done making these and putting them together. But we're going to start off with a medium sized bowl today with some ground pork. Right. So I've got eight ounces, so a half a pound of ground pork in the bowl. Right. And it's cold. It just came out of the fridge. So you want to make sure you keep that chilled. Now for this recipe, you could use ground pork, ground chicken, ground turkey, whatever you prefer. Um, but we're using pork for today. We're going to be adding in about a cup of shredded cabbage, right? And to save time, and if you don't need a whole giant cabbage, right, what this is right here, it's coleslaw mix. So you can buy this in a smaller package instead of a massive cabbage, um, especially if you're not going to eat that much, right? So we're going to do about a cup of cabbage, and this has just got the carrots and things mixed in. So for me, it's going to be about two small handfuls, right? Everything is going to get built into this one bowl, right? This is going to be our filling for our spring rolls. So we're just going to start working our ingredients in. Now to this, we're going to be adding a bunch more stuff. So I'm just going to set this aside back here for a sec, out of the way. And we're going to be doing about two tablespoons of green onion, right? Green onion, scallions. You want to make sure that you trim off anything that is dry, right? You don't want to use that. Um, and clean off anything down at the bottom. You can always peel this layer back if it needs to be trimmed up a little bit. But you want to chop these fairly fine, right? Some nice thin slices. I'm just going to trim some of this dry stuff there, right? So we're going to need about two tablespoons. You want to make sure you're using a nice sharp knife. You go right down to those whites, right? You could actually regrow these, put them in a little water, so they sprout. So we're going to do three of these. And I said trim off anything that's dried. So green right down to the white. So this is going to give us some great flavor, but also give us some color inside our spring rolls. All right, a little bit of crunch. So now we're going to add these green onions into our bowl. We're just going to keep building all our ingredients. So our ground pork, our cabbage mixture. We're going to add the green onions in. And now we're going to add in a little bit of water chestnuts. And these you can buy in a can. All right, so we need about a tablespoon. So, you know, four or five or so of these. Plenty. And you want to mince these up fairly small. You want little tiny bits, right? But this is also going to give you some crunch as well. So let's slice through these, right? So just chopping up our water chestnuts. This way. So a nice minced texture. So little tiny bits, right? I know it's a little hard to see with the white on white, but... You can see there, right? You want to make them nice and smooth. All right. So this will help give us a little bit of crunch to our spring roll filling, as well as the cabbage and the green onion. Right. Lots of veggies are a great way to fill these up. So it's not just the meat, right? You're adding a lot of layers of flavor to this. Now our next ingredient is going to be some cilantro. So we want to have you know, a good tablespoon or so of cilantro. So I'm going to break off worth here and you can use these finer stems those are okay the real tough stems at the bottom of the bunch you want to stay away from those but if the fine little delicate stems at the top where the leaves are those are fine and you just want to run your knife through the cilantro if you don't have cilantro you could also use parsley in its place um, or you could leave it out you wouldn't want to use dried it wouldn't create quite the same texture as the fresh Okay. Now through. Chopping this up nice and small. Always using a nice sharp knife. Okay. Mince it up fine. Okay. I said, I'm going to add this in. This is going to give us a nice shade of dark green in our filling. Oh, 
most of it here. Be fine. And then our last thing that we're gonna need to chop is a little bit of garlic. So we're gonna grab one clove of garlic here and we're gonna peel it first. Okay, so give it a good whack. Pop that peel off. Trim off anything that is dry from that root end. You don't want that in your recipe. And then we're just gonna give that a nice mince, right? So mincing means to chop finely. We so wanna have some garlic spread throughout, not just a couple of big chunks, right? This is gonna give us a great flavor, right? Between the cilantro, the fresh garlic. So we're gonna add this into our filling mixture. Everything build into one bowl. So we've got the pork, the cabbage, our green onions, okay, our garlic, water chestnuts. Build this through. Okay. Now we're gonna need to add some stuff in for a little bit more moisture to this as well. So we're gonna add some sauces and spices in next. So we're gonna build that in, that'll make it a little bit easier to stir and combine as well. All right. So our next thing that we're gonna add in is some sesame oil. All right. You wanna make sure that you're using your know, pure sesame oil. So we're gonna add in one teaspoon of sesame oil. This will give us a great flavor. It's a lot of little bits of things that we're adding in now. I'm gonna add in a teaspoon of fish sauce. So all these great Asian flavors since those are the countries we're focusing on in this unit, right? Then we're gonna to go to a half a teaspoon of soy sauce. And now, since we've added some soy sauce in, we're gonna go light on the salt because soy sauce is also high in sodium, right? So we're only gonna add in a teaspoon of salt. That'll help flavor and season the meat. I'm gonna do a half a teaspoon of white sugar, right? Just a little bit, give it a little bit of sweetness. Asian cuisine is always about flavor balance, right? So just a small little half a teaspoon of sugar and an eighth of a teaspoon of white pepper, right? Now, ground white pepper, just so you know, white pepper is stronger, more concentrated in flavor than black pepper, right? So go less on this. You can always add more in, but you can't take it back out, right? And the idea of white pepper is that, yes, it has a more intense flavor, but also a lighter color. So I'm doing an eighth of a teaspoon, so just half of my little quarter teaspoon here. See that color, right? So it's a lighter shade of pepper than the black pepper. But if all you have is black pepper, that's fine as well, but you can use that. Okay, so that is our filling mixture. Now for this, you wanna make sure that you can get in here and mix this really good. I'm just using the back of the spoon to break up that pork a little bit more. We wanna get all of those ingredients incorporated. Lots of flavors, lots of aromas, right? Smells good already. And we haven't even fried anything yet. So we're gonna be filling these into some spring roll pastry. So I'll be showing you that. Right, so we've got the fryer all set up and all ready to go. All right, so now you can start to see that mixture coming together. My favorite is the sesame oil in this. Love the smell of sesame oil. You know, good, good homemade food, right? All right, so we're gonna clean off our board here. We want to get ready to make the spring rolls. This is just my damp towel there so it doesn't slide, right? Clean up our mess as we go, always. Now, to attach the 
spring rolls to themselves as you're rolling, right? There's a couple of options that you can do. Um, same as if you were making egg rolls and things like that. You could try using just a little bit of water. You can use a uh, cracked egg, right? Scramble it up. Or you can make what we call a slurry, right? So this is just a little dish with about a tablespoon of all-purpose flour. And I'm going to add a little bit of water into this to make a slurry, to make it a paste, right? This is going to be my glue for making sure that the spring rolls are sealed. So whatever method you prefer, you already do one at home for other things. I said we're just adding in enough water to make a paste that I can smear with my fingertip. Just add our water in a little at a time. So this becomes our flour glue. And then flour is naturally glutinous, so it will work as a good binder. So I'm just going to go a little bit thinner. I want it to be able to spread and smear, right? You can kind of see that there. Okay. So that's going to be our glue for our spring rolls. So I'll set that over here to the side. Now I'm going to be using so what we call spring roll pastry. Now, you can find these in some local grocery stores. Typically, though, you might have to go to an Asian market um, to find them, but this is what you're looking for, right? So spring roll pastry. You can use and substitute <clears throat> egg roll wrappers for this recipe. Um, just know that the egg roll wrappers are thicker. Um, it's going to be a different texture as well. Spring roll wrappers, the pastry is very thin, light, crispy in texture. One of my favorites. Now, I took them out of the package earlier, and I like to work with them out of a Ziploc bag. Right, so that way I can just take a couple out at a time. Once you open that package, you can't really seal that again, but this way I could seal this here in between making it, right? I'm gonna pull these out so you can see. Now, with these, if they do tend to stick together, just gently peel them apart. The nice thing about the spring roll pastry is that it is a little bit more pliable than an egg roll wrapper, so it's less likely to tear as well. So this is a six inch square, right, that we're gonna be using. So I'm going to pull a couple of these out. And I'm going to stick these back in the bag, right? And I'll just pull them out that way. Um, you could also put a slightly damp cloth over them. Make sure it's not soaking wet, though, because it'll make them soggy. So you can just keep those to the side this way. And then we're going to start building our spring rolls. So with the filling, since we have our filling already all set, right? Just give that another good quick stir here. You want to put about two to three tablespoons worth of filling in each roll. You don't want them so full that they're not going to fry properly, right? So you can use, you know, any spoon. You can use your fingers. That was easier. Right? So a couple spoonfuls worth. So it's not too, too much. We're trying to spread it out just a little bit. I said, I've already got the fryer set up and ready for this. Okay. So I put these with one of the points towards me, right? The other one away, off to the side. Okay. So now when you're building your spring roll, you want to start by pulling this up away from you, right? That's why I have the filling mixture down here in this bottom third, right? You can even come in and spread it out a little bit more evenly because you're going to bring this up and over. So kind of similar to starting to do a burrito, right? I'm just gonna give that a little tug back just to tighten that filling up some. Now I'm gonna roll this forward just a little bit until I get to the center point. Okay, so now I already have a little bit of a roll going here with my spring roll pastry. Then I'm gonna need to come in and tuck in the sides. Now this is when you can come in and start putting in some glue along this outside edge to make sure things are adhering. This is to help to make sure that your spring rolls don't pop open when they're in the fryer, because then you're gonna lose all your filling. So the idea is to tuck this in on the side, so you're starting to make like an envelope, right? So very similar technique to a burrito, right? 
We tuck it in on this side. And then you're going to roll forward nice and tightly, right? So roll slowly, tightly as you go. We have our roll. Okay. So we're going to do that again so you can see the process. So remember to have that point towards you, having that filling in that bottom third of the pastry. Bring that up. And then we're going to roll forward a little bit. Like I said, if you're comfortable, you can just glue at the top, right? So you can just start folding in your sides. You feel that you're confident, you know, and that you're getting a tight roll. And then you can just glue at the top. Like I said, you could use egg wash, a little bit of water. You just want something to make sure that everything's going to stay sealed while it is in the fryer. You don't want to lose all your yummy filling. And there we go, right? So now these are gonna go into, I've got the deep fryer set up here. I've got my little basket in this time, right? And I'm gonna put these straight up into the fryer. Right? So put them in the basket, and I'm gonna show you how to roll these a couple more times while these are doing their thing, okay? Now, because these have a pork filling, I need to make sure that they get cooked in the center to at least 145 degrees. Okay, if you were doing beef, 155, if you're doing chicken or turkey that's ground, 165, right? That's the minimum internal temperature. So you want to make sure that they get golden brown and crispy on the outside as well, right? So these are going to start doing their thing. And I'm going to show you how to roll a couple more. But I'm going to show you how to take the temperature of them as well. The more that you do these type of things, the, the better you get at judging that. But you can always take a sample and... Take the temperature, right? Just to be safe, because you want to make sure that you're, you know, whenever you're cooking with meats and things, that you are doing so safely, right? Like I said, so we're going to take our filling. So you want them full, but not so that they're going to explode, because they're too full, right? Don't want to let go of the spoon. And I love them with fillings with the ground pork. It's one of my favorites. Okay, so remember, we're going to take, fold up that bottom corner, right? Roll forward a little bit till you get to that center line. Right? And then bring it in on the side, tucking it in tight, like I said, so that you start to get that envelope shape as you go. And then we're going to roll forward. Okay. Nice and tight, keeping that seam down, right? So that way you want to make sure that's what you're worried about, sealing. Okay. Some of you guys might already be pros at this. I know a couple of my students are. But it's something that is definitely worth perfecting as a skill, right? Because um, buying these things can get expensive and you can make a giant batch of them yourself way less money. And you can change the filling out depending on what you like. Okay. So we're going to fry those after. So now I'm going to check on them in the fryer. Already start to looking yummy. Okay. Look at that, right? Getting nice and crispy, a little bubbling. They're floating up as they go as well, right? So what I want to do at this point is they already look crispy on the outside, but I want to make sure that they're cooked on the inside. So I'm going to take one out. I've got my digital thermometer, right? Because remember, safety first. You want to make sure that we're cooking these things through, right? So I'm going to take one out. I said because they look done, but it's always worth double checking, right? So if you take your thermometer, you can go down into the end, right, and just check one. And then you can kind of time it out to see how long it took for the next batch, okay? So we're trying to get there. So it's almost there. So we're gonna drop these back in for a couple more seconds. But that's why you wanna tempt them those first couple times, right, is we wanna make sure that we're cooking that fully to at least 145 for pork, right? Um, we want to worry about things like trichinosis, you know, salmonella with chicken, E. coli with beef, 
You want to make sure that you're cooking your meat fully all the way through. Okay. Now, this will make a good size batch, you know, more than a dozen. I'll probably get close to a dozen or so. Um, maybe a little bit more of the spring rolls. And these will also reheat well, right? So if you don't eat them all right away today, um, they do reheat well in the oven or an air fryer just for a few minutes. Try to keep avoid from putting them in the microwave because then they just get weird, right? Okay, so we're going to check this one. Here, my oil bubbling away in there. There we go. Now we're at, yep. So I'm up to 150, right? So that's perfect. Pull that. And I'm putting these right onto a tray with paper towel. And I'm going to drop these other two in. Let those start cooking. Now my fryer does come with a cover that I like to use, so that way I'm not splattering oil all over the kitchen, right? But you can see how beautiful these are. I said these are one of my all-time favorites. And there are many variations, you know, of lumpia, of uh, little Cambodian rolls that I love, right? Uh, so there's a lot of options with these, right, for fillings and different things. Some use rice noodles, some use mushrooms and stuff. That's a nice thing, you know, is that you're, you're going to find a recipe easily that you can adapt. And you can adapt this recipe to either put something in or leave something out. So if you like mushrooms, throw some mushrooms in, right? What's stopping you? But this is what we're looking for, right, is that crispy texture, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut through one here so you can hear that crunch, right? Hear that. Look at that. That's the inside, right? Beautiful, light, crunchy texture. Now, if you're serving these up, right, you could stack them on a plate. They said they will not last long, for sure, um, especially as you're frying them. And then for sauces and things like that, uh, it's whatever you like, right? If you like spicy, add a little sriracha. This here is a little sweet chili sauce, which is one of my favorites to have with spring rolls. Because um, it's got the little sweets, got the little spice to it, right? But like I said, just make sure that when you're cooking them, though, you're getting them to that proper temperature. So I can see that pork is cooked in there perfectly, right, and done. You don't want to have any raw meat left on the inside of your spring roll because that can make you sick, right? So always check that. Like I said, if you're going to reheat them, I always suggest, you know, warming them up in an oven or something like that instead. Um, try to avoid the microwave, okay? So that is your Chinese crispy spring rolls today. So hopefully it's something that some of you guys I know are already kind of doing variations of this at home, but hopefully the rest of you join in and uh, have a chance to make some soon.